Hi, this is Guy. You know, a great way to prevent subterranean termites are termite monitoring stations. The problem is, though, that these things can be expensive. The cheap ones cost about $15 each. And I have seen, them, seen these things cost as much as $25 each. Since you need to place these things about every eight feet apart around your entire house, this is probably going to cost you somewhere around $300 or more to do an average size home. And don't even get me started on what the pest control companies are going to charge for this. Well, how would you like to make your own termite monitoring, st monitoring stations for less than 50 cents each using throwaway plastic water bottles, soda bottles, Powerade bottles, Gatorade bottles, and that sort of thing. Really, almost any small clear bottles that you happen to have are probably going to work. That's right. You can make your own monitoring stations for less than 50 cents each, and you can place them as close as four feet apart instead of the eight feet apart so that you can make sure that the termites cannot possibly miss any of them. And you can still protect your entire house for under $25. Now, if I have captured your interest, then stay tuned. I am going to show you exactly how to do it. Before I get into it, though, I want you to know that my goal is to save people money. So if you find this video helpful, please share it with someone you know who may also need to save a buck on pest control. Also, if you would like to see more of my videos, then please click the subscribe button and don't forget to click on that little bell next to it so that you will get notified the next time I have a video published. Now, if you really like what I do, please show me a little love and click on that like button as well. Okay, let's get right into it. The first thing you need to know is that you must use the correct bottles. You do not want to use those flimsy, thin-walled, cheap bottles that are going to crush easily. You need to use the ones that are thick enough so they will not collapse easily. These can be the more expensive brands of water, clear soda bottles, Powerade, or even Gatorade bottles. For these things to work, you need to give the termites a food source, but you do not want to use any sort of pesticides. You are not looking to kill the termites at this point. You are just trying to find out if they are anywhere near your home. If they set off one of these stations, then you can treat them at that time. The professionals know that the food source needs to be cellulose. That is because the only species under the ground that is going to eat cellulose is going to be termites. So if cellulose is going to be the food source, then what should we use as the bait? Well, everyone knows that termites eat wood, right? And that is because Wood contains cellulose. Now, as with all living things, termites tend to be somewhat lazy, so they prefer to eat wood that is soft. They will also eat hardwood too, if they have to, but they would much prefer to eat wood that is soft. So, what I like to use is balsa wood. It is very soft and easily eaten. Therefore, 
not only are the termites more likely to be attracted to it, but they're going to eat through it faster than if you were to use a hardwood, thereby setting off the station indicator sooner. I also like to use balsa wood because it is very easy to work with. In fact, the only tools you need to make one of these things are a utility knife and a small paintbrush. I purchased this package of balsa wood sticks for about $19. They are one half by one half inches and they are 12 inches long. That is about 38 cents per stick and it only takes one stick to make a monitoring station. Naturally, I will place links in the description for everything that I show you in this video. Now, to make one of these things, start by measuring the length that the stick needs to be. Simply insert the stick into the bottle so that the end of the stick is centered on the bottom of the bottle. Then make a mark on the stick that is about 3 sixteenths of an inch or about 5 millimeters above the bottle opening. It doesn't need to be spot on perfect so you can kind of just take your best guess. The important thing is that the cap must be able to be screwed back on the bottle to put pressure on the stick. You don't want the stick to be loose in the bottle. Since you were working with balsa wood, all you need is a utility knife to cut it. Always make sure that you have a sharp blade in the knife before you begin. A sharp blade not only makes the job easier and faster, but it also makes it safer as well. Now, I find that you can get a smoother cut if you cut the stick a little bit on all four sides instead of trying to cut it all the way through at the same time from one side. After you cut the stick, check to make sure that it is the correct length. At this point, you need to make a cardboard spacer to fill the gap between the stick and the opening of the bottleneck. Just wrap a narrow piece of corrugated cardboard around the stick until it is the correct size to snugly fit inside the neck of the bottle. This will help to center the stick and hold it securely in place while you are screwing on the cap. If you just make your spacer a little bit too loose, don't worry. Just wrap some additional duct tape around it until it fits securely. Now, spray the factory end of the stick with a fluorescent orange paint. Sometimes you may need to give it a second coat, but oftentimes one coat is all that you need. After the paint dries, which only takes a few minutes, Insert the stick into the bottle and ensure that it is centered on the bottom. Then, just screw the cap on securely. Next, cut a piece of scrap stick about one and a half inches long or about 38 millimeters. This will be your template for cutting holes in the side of the bottle. Use the template and a Sharpie to mark four places that are placed equally around the bottle, near the cap, and then mark four places about an inch from the bottom, or about 2.5 centimeters from the bottom of the bottle. You want these holes centered between the ones that you cut near the top side of the bottle. The spacing does not need to be perfect, so there's no need to really measure. Cut out the marked areas with your utility knife and be careful when you're doing this because it is very easy to 
slip and kind of cut yourself with it. Don't worry if you cut one of the lines too far. That will not hurt anything. With a little practice, you're going to be able to get it spot on every time. Finally, all you need to do is paint the bottom of the bottle black. I like to use a flat black Krylon Color Max acrylic latex indoor outdoor paint. You want to paint the entire bottom of the bottle with the exception of the orange portion of the stick because that needs to show through. Be careful while you are painting around the stick because it is very easy to slip and cover the orange area. If that should happen, just wipe the paint off with a paper towel and start again. The paint is very easily removed when it is wet. The best way to avoid getting paint over the orange area is to cut in on it with a fairly dry brush. Now, paint the entire bottom of the bottle and also paint about an inch down the side all the way around the bottle. After the paint dries, you may find some gaps in the paint that need to be touched up. Also, keep in mind that you are painting over plastic and you are exposing it to the weather. So you may need to touch up the paint from time to time after they are installed. Okay, now that you know how to make the monitoring stations, let's talk about how to install them. Normally, these type of termite stations are located every 8 to 20 feet around the entire building because the stations are quite costly to purchase. The problem with spreading them out that far is the termites can miss them. The further apart they are, the more likely it, is, likely it is that the termites are not going to find them. Since making these stations yourself is so cheap, you can literally install them every four feet apart. So there is no way that the termites are ever going to miss them. Also, you do not need to install them all at once. You see, there is no need to drink 50 bottles of Powerade, soda, or water in one day. You can take a little time to kind of save up 20 or 30 bottles and then just start by placing them every 8 feet apart. As you acquire more bottles, you can install the stations between the ones that you already did so that you can eventually end up with a station every four feet. Also, you do not need to use the same exact bottles all the time. As long as the bottles meet the criteria of being clear and strong enough, then it's perfectly okay to mix different kinds of bottles. Like I said, the goal here is to get a station located every four feet around the house but it is important to locate them correctly. The station should be located clear of the drip edge of the roof, particularly if the house, do not, house does not have gutters. As a general rule, you should locate them three to four feet away from the edge of the house. Now, nobody else is going to tell you to do this, but I think it is a very good idea to also locate monitoring stations on both sides of the driveway. Since your driveway does not have a roof, you can locate the stations just a few inches from the sides of the driveway. Installation is quick and easy with a drill and a garden auger bit. Just drill a hole in the ground that is deep enough to accommodate the bottle and push it into the ground. Only leave about one quarter of an inch of the bottle above the surface of the ground so that you can mow right over the top of them. By leaving just a quarter of an inch, 
you can avoid any fear of damaging them when the mower passes over the top of them. Now that you have your termite stations installed, you just need to walk around the house every month and look for missing orange sticks. If you see a station that does, does not have a visible orange mark, then there is a high probability that you have termites. The way the stations work is that the termites will be attracted to the wood before they are attracted to your house. And they are going to eat the wood in the station. If you remember when we were cutting the wood for the bottles, we cut the sticks just a little bit longer than the bottle. That put the sticks under pressure. So when the termites eat through the sticks, the sticks are going to collapse and the orange marker is going to drop down into the bottle and disappear from view. In the event one of the stations becomes active with termites, then it is pretty easy to treat them. Just drill a hole in the ground right next to the station that is affected and install an advanced termite bait station right next to it. You can buy these stations one at a time. Just be sure that you load the station with a Trelona bait cartridge and not the monitoring cartridge because that's also wood. The termites are going to quickly find this bait and they will take it back to the colony and share it with the other termites. Then it's lights out for the entire colony. Now, if you would like to give this process a bit of a boost, then all you have to do is drill a hole in the top of the monitoring station that you made and fill the bottle with a fipronil foam. This will poison the remaining wood in your monitoring station, thereby turning the wood into more bait. The termites cannot identify the fipronil foam as a poison, so they will happily continue to eat it and bring it back to the colony. Now please note that these stations are not recommended for an existing termite infestation. The reason for that is because the termites have already found an ample food supply in your house. So there would be no reason for the termites to divert to the monitoring stations. Even if they did, the stations are intended to monitor and not to be a treatment methodology for an existing infestation. They should do a wonderful job preventing an infestation. But if you already have termites eating on your house, then you need to watch my videos on how to treat subterranean termites by either trenching or by using termite granules. I will place links in the description and at the end of this video for both of those videos. Also, please note that termite monitoring stations only work for sub terranean termites and not for drywood termites. Those guys literally fly to your house so they will totally bypass the monitoring stations. The good news is though that 90% of the time the termites that will attack your house are going to be subterranean. Drywood termites are only located in certain warmer areas of the United States and some other tropical countries. So, for the most part, this is probably going to be a very good option for you for preventing subterranean termites. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and please do not hesitate to ask questions. Remember, I will answer any questions about any pest, any time, for anybody, for free, even if I do not have a video on the particular pest in question. 
I am always here to help.